Summary of Invisible Cities by Italo Calvino Kublai Khan listens carefully as Marco Polo tells him about wonderful towns, even though he doesn't always believe everything Marco says. Kublai's empire is huge, and he knows he'll never fully understand the lands he's taken over. This makes him sad and makes him feel like his kingdom is a corrupt mess that can't be fixed. Kublai starts to see that there is a pattern to his kingdom as Marco tells him stories. Marco talks about the city of Diamara, which has towers. It makes people feel jealous of other people who think they've had similar nights and were happy. People can find everything they want in Isidora, but guys who go there do so when they are old, not when they are young. You can describe Dorothea by its products, but you can also say, as a camel driver once told Marco, that Dorothea broadens your view of the world. Then, Marco tells Kublai about Zyra, where the sizes of certain things match up with things that happened in Zyra's past. In this way, Zyra's past is written in those things, while making people feel like they can enjoy the city. Marco talks about what he did in the city of Tamara, where people don't see things. People instead see paintings or statues of things that look like other things. Because of this, he says that the city will never be found. Zora is a memorable place, but only because it hasn't changed. Because of this, it went away. Marco tells Kublai about Despina, which looks different to travelers from different places. Zerma repeats itself so that people will remember it, but each person remembers something different. Isara was built on top of an underground lake, and people argue about whether the gods of the city live in the wells or in the lake. When Marco starts telling Kublai about things, he doesn't speak Kublai's language, so he points to things and makes movements. Kublai remembers what each thing means. Marco eventually learns the language, and Kublai starts to wonder if he will take over his kingdom once he knows what each object means. Marco says that Kublai will become an icon at that point, just like the items. Kublai gets more and more upset that Marco never tells him anything helpful. Both guys stop talking and start talking to each other in their heads. They picture Marco saying that when people get lost, they learn more about where they came from and how they fit into the world. Marco talks about Morilia, a beautiful city where tourists must look at pictures from when Morilia was still a small town. Back then, no one thought Morilia's small town was charming, but now, it's seen as the perfect place to live. Marco says that the Morilia of today is not the same as the Morilia of the past. Fedora has a museum where there are models of fedoras. Each fedora model is someone's idea of what the city should be like. Marco says that people expect to be able to figure out a place quickly, but Zoe doesn't let them do this because they can do anything anywhere. Zenobia, on the other hand, is a city built on stilts. Most people think that Zenobia is what their dream city would look like. About 80 miles away is the city of Euphemia, which is a place where traders meet to talk and trade stories. But when the traders leave, they can't remember their own stories because the stories of others have changed them. Marco talks about things by using things in motions. Kublai thinks this gives him a lot of room to make up his own stories. As they learn to speak the same language, it becomes less fun to talk to each other, until the two guys spend most of their time sitting quietly. Kublai says he'll talk about places, and Marco will tell him if they're real. He talks about one, and Marco says it's real, but it doesn't have a name or a place. It's just a city he made up, and there's nothing that ties it together. He says that towns are built out of wants and fears, even though most people think they were built in a logical way. The city of Zobiide is white. Men thought of running after a naked woman who ran away, so they got together in Zobiide to set up the chase. Now they know that Zobiide is just a trick. Marco can't find things where they should be in Hypatia. Armilla is a city made up of nothing but pipes. Marco sees naked women bathing and wonders if people built it to make up for mistreating the water on Earth. In Chloe, people don't talk, but instead think about the people they might meet. Valdrada, on the other hand, is made so that everything that happens there echoes in the water, and the reflections are more important than the acts themselves. Kublai explains a dream city. 
Marco says the city exists, but he can't tell Kublai about it. As time goes on, Kublai sometimes feels like his kingdom is falling apart and sometimes like it's in great shape. Marco talks about Olivia, which is a place that can be beautiful or bad. The city of Sophronia is split in half. One is like a fair and the other seems permanent, but for half the year, the part that seems permanent picks up and goes. Utropia is made up of many places, and people move from one city to another. If you look up in Zemrud, you'll see beautiful things, but if you look down, you'll see bad things. Most people look down, and not many look back up. People in Aglora are too interested in stories about an old Aglora to give a true description of the Aglora they live in. Kublai and Marco talk about whether or not they can make a model city that can be used to find out all other towns. Kublai looks at the growth of his kingdom. At first, the kingdom seems sick around the edges, but after a while, it seems fat and heavy. Marco tells him about Octavia, a city that is floating in the middle of nothing. Residents of their city know that it won't always be there. People in Ercilia use strings to show who they are related to, but they move around a lot and try to rebuild the city and do it better each time. The city of Bossus is built on high stilts. Travelers rarely see the people who live there, but some people think they spend their time looking at the earth and thinking about how lonely they are. There are two kinds of gods in Leandra, the Penates and the Laris. The gods are fighting over who is the city's soul. People are born into their parts in Melania and have the same talks over and over again. Kublai asks Marco to tell him about a bridge, but Kublai wants to know which stone is the most important. Marco says that the most important part is the bridge. Kublai and Marco stay up all night one night. At dawn, Kublai says that Marco never talks about Venice, but Marco says he does every time he talks about a city. He talks about Esmeralda, a city that, if Kublai wants to draw a plan of it, must show the routes that rats and swallows take. In Phyllis, Marco says that people who have to stay in a new place for a long time stop noticing what's going on around them. He then says that he used to think Pira looked one way, but now that he has seen it for himself, he doesn't know how he ever thought that. He talks about a scary time he had in Adelma, where everyone looked like a friend who had died. Marco says that the people of Eudoxia think that a carpet is a divine plan of the city and the universe. However, it's possible that Eudoxia is the map of the universe. Kublai says that Marco is going back in time through his memories, but it's possible that both of them are making this up. Marco and Kublai start to wonder if they are really in Kublai's yard or if they are just talking in their heads. Marco tells Kublai about Moriana, who has a beautiful side and a bad side. Nearby Clarice has a long history of falling apart and starting over, but the survivors keep rebuilding it until it can't be recognized. Eusapia has a city for the dead below it, but it's hard to tell who's alive and who's dead. It's possible that the dead Eusapia built the city for the living. Beersheba tries to be good, but in fact, it is greedy and crooked. People in Leonia throw away their things every day, and one day there will be a huge pile of trash. Marco and Kublai are not sure if they are real. Kublai thinks that if he can make learning about each city into a game of chess, he can come up with rules that will help him understand his kingdom. He asks Marco to talk about places by using chess pieces. Kublai starts to wonder why people play chess when people win and lose but the board stays the same. Marco talks about Irene, a place he's never been to but would need a new name if he did. Argia is made of dirt, and people who want to go there must believe that it is real. In Thecla, people build their city to look like the stars. They do this because they think that if they keep building forever, Thecla will never go downhill. Marco talks about getting to Trude and finding out that it is the whole world. In Olinda, you can find the center of the city, which grows in rings outward from it. Kublai keeps wondering what the point of chess is while Marco reads the chessboard's wood. Kublai gets his map out. He and Marco talk about how the listener decides how a story goes, and Kublai says that human society makes him feel like a prisoner. Marco can find towns on a map and figure out how to get to some of them. 
he can also see that San Francisco will be part of a kingdom bigger than Kublai's in the future. Marco talks about La Domia, which has cities for the living, the dead, and the future. People always ask the dead and the yet-to-be-born for advice about their own lives. No one wants to think that people could live forever or that the world could end. Astronomers built Perinthia to be like the gods, but after a few generations, the city is full of monsters. Astronomers have to figure out if their numbers were wrong or if the gods are really scary. Marco stops in Procopia every year, and the last time he was there, he was in a hotel room with 26 copies of himself. Risa is a sad city, but it doesn't know that there's a happy city inside it. In Andrea, people look for a change in the sky when they want to make a change. People there are wise and sure of themselves. A lost goat herd says that Sicilia used to be a single city, but that it is now everywhere. Morosia, on the other hand, is made up of a city of rats and a city of swallows, and the swallows are always fighting to get away from the rats. Marco then talks about Penthesilia, a city that you can't get into because its borders go on forever. In Theodora, people spent years trying to get rid of animals, but now they are starting to come back. Berenice has two towns, one that is fair and one that is not. The just one is always trying to get away from the unjust, but he or she also wants to live as corruptly as the unjust do. Kublai looks at towns like New Harmony and Utopia in his map. He asks Marco to make a map of how to get there, but Marco says they can't know which one will work. Cities like Enoch and Brave New World are nightmares for Kublai. He says that they will end up in the city of hell no matter what. Marco says that if the city of hell is real, then they are already their people can avoid feeling overpowered by the inferno by either ignoring it or looking for things that aren't part of the blaze and trying to save them. About the author. Calvino was born in Italy in 1923. His father lived in Mexico for a while before moving to Cuba, and his mother gave him the name Calvino to remind him of his Italian roots. However, when Calvino was two years old, his family moved back to Europe. His parents made fun of both faith and the National Fascist Party, which was in power at the time. Because of this, they kept Calvino out of religious lessons at school. During World War II, Calvino hid his love of literature by going to the University of Turin and then the University of Florence to study agriculture. He went into hiding instead of joining the army. In 1944, he thought that the communists had the best case, so he joined the communist Italian resistance. After the war, Calvino went back to Turin, where he finished his master's thesis on Joseph Conrad and got involved in communist groups and publications. In the late 1940s, he started writing novels and short stories, which got him a lot of praise. However, his realist works were not well accepted. After that, he started writing fantasy books, all of which did very well. After the Soviet Union invaded Hungary in 1957, he left the Italian Communist Party. He still believed in communism as an idea, but he never joined another party. After a close friend died and the French culture change, Calvino went through an intellectual depression and joined a group of writers called Aleppo. During this time, he wrote Invisible Cities. Calvino died in 1985. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.